بشمال العجز جهلا وتصغر في العيون إذا كبرت وتفقد إن جهلت وأنت باق وتوجد إن علمت ولو فقدت بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما وهدى اللهم إنا نسألك الهدى والتقى والأفاف والغنى We praise Allah and we seek his forgiveness and we seek refuge in Allah from the evils of our souls and we ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make our matters easy for us and to facilitate for us our matters and our affairs. Thereafter to proceed inshallah ta'ala we're going to continue with the lesson, the Fawti Hadith lesson of Imam al-Nawawi, the Fawti Hadith book and in this lesson inshallah we're going to start from Hadith number 29. So we'll read the hadith first and then do the ta'liq, the short uh, explanation of the hadith. Okay, tafadal. Al-Hadith al-Tasir al-Wadishroon An Mu'ad ibn Jirni wa liyallahu anhu qala kutu ya Rasulullah akhbirni akhbirni bi'amalin yadukhiluni al-jannah wa yiba'aduni min al-nar qala laqad sa'alta anadim وإنه ليسير لا يسيرون على من يسره الله عليه تعبد الله لا تشرك به شيئا وتقيم الصلاة وتؤتي الزكاة وتصوم رمضان وتحج البيت ثم قال ألا دونك على أبواب الخير الصوم جنة والصدق والصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ النار النار وصلاة, وصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل ثم ثم تلا تتجافى تتجافى جنوبهم عن المراجع حتى بلغ يعملون يعلمون حتى بلغ يعلمون حتى بلغ يعملون يعملون ثم قال ألا أخبرك برأس الأمر وعموده الصلاة وذروة سلامه سلامه قلت بلى يا رسول الله قال رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سلامه الجهاد ثم قال ألا أخبرك بملاك ذلك كله قلت بلى يا رسول الله فأخذ بلسانه وقال كف عليك هذا قلت يا نبي الله وإنا لمؤاخذون بما نتكلم به فقال اهتكلتك أمك وهل يقب الناس في النار على وجوههم أو على مناخرهم إلا حصائد ألسنتهم رواه الترمذي وقال حديث حسن صحيح Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. This is hadith number 29 and it is collected by Imam Tirmidhi in his jamia on the authority of Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu an. Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu an was one of the most knowledgeable companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam says about him that he will be the leader of the scholars on the day of judgment. أعلم أمتي بالحلال والحرام معاذ. In another narration, he says that معاذ, the person who knows or the individual who knows the ruling <coughs> pertaining to halal and haram, meaning fiqh, from my ummah is معاذ. So معاذ was a knowledgeable companion. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam would send him to different lands and different places in order to give da'wah. And معاذ narrates this hadith. And this is a very important hadith. And in this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, informs us of something very important. A very important, the most important deeds that can get someone to Jannah and distance them from the hellfire. And this is, of course, what every Muslim wants. Every single individual wants to be distanced away from the hellfire and be admitted into the Jannah. And this is why Allah Azza wa Jalla says that this is the true success. فَمَنْ زُحْزِهَا عَنِ النَّارِ وَأُدْخِلَ الْجَنَّةَ فَقَدْ فَازَ Whoever is removed or whoever is drawn away from the hellfire and, ad and admitted into Jannah, then that person has attained the great success. So this is what every Muslim wants. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here is telling us the deeds, the most important deeds that can get us to Jannah. So in this hadith, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he mentions a number of ibadat, a number of uh, or types of worship that are easy for the person 
whom Allah Azza wa Jal makes easy for them. The first one is, like the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will say, first of all, Mu'ad asks him the question, Qultu Ya Rasulullah, I said to the Messenger of Allah, O Messenger of Allah, أخبرني بعمل يدخلني الجنة ويباعدني عن النار. So this is a very important question that Mu'ad asked. He said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, inform me of a deed, of an action that will admit me into Jannah and keep me away from the hellfire. So of course, this is what every single Muslim wants. Every single intellect, intellect uh, every single intellectual person or intelligent person wants this. And the Prophet Sallallahu said to him, لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ You have asked about something very important. An عَظِيمٍ An enormous matter. Something very, very important. Meaning that Mu'ad asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a very important question. So the Prophet responded to the question that Mu'ad asked without giving him the answer in order to draw his attention to the following. So he said to him that you've asked about a very important matter and a very important answer will be given to him of course. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him لَقَدْ سَأَلْتَ عَنْ عَظِيمٍ وَإِنَّهُ لَيَسِيرٌ عَلَى مَنْ يَسَّرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ It is easy for the person whom Allah makes easy for. Meaning that it is not easy for the person whom Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't make easy for. Does not make easy for. Then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned a number of ibadat or types of worship that can be performed in order to reach that goal or in order to attain uh, that success. He said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, it is easy matter. And of course, this indicates that this religion is a easy religion that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in another hadith that Allah Azza wa Jal does not like to burden his servants. And in the Quran, of course, there are evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah which show us that this is the um, how easy the religion is. وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجْ Allah says, Allah did not make the religion difficult for you. There is no hardship in the religion. يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ Allah Azza wa Jal, after he described to us the importance of fasting and how a person should fast, he mentions that يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ بِكُمُ الْيُسْرَ Allah wants ease for you. وَلَا يُرِيدُ بِكُمُ الْعُسْرَ And he doesn't want difficult for you. Uh, so this hadith is a hadith which shows us and it indicates that this religion is very easy. This is why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would often tell his companions that بَشِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا يَسِّرُوا وَلَا تُعَسِّرُوا Make things easy and do not make things difficult. So the ibadat are easy. Allah Azza wa Jal obligated upon us and made obligatory and he ordained that we fulfill these ibadat. And if he had known that, of course he knew, but Allah Azza wa Jal, if he had known that it would be difficult for us to complete these, then they, he, he would not uh, made it obligatory upon us. So the first one is, تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ لَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave his first answer. He said, تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ Worship Allah and do not associate anything with Him. So the essence and the core of the core foundation of everything goes back to Tawheed. He's telling him that you have to worship Allah alone. You have to make your worship sincere for Allah Azza wa Jal. Do not associate partners with Him. Whoever worships other than Allah, Allah will make that person haram. Allah will make, uh, make Jannah haram for that person. Uh, the first thing is that you have to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. And this, is, this comes in another hadith where Mu'ad was being sent to Yemen to give da'wah, to call people to Allah. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to him, 
فليكن أو فليكن أول ما تدعوهم إليه شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله. Let the first thing that you call them to be the shahada, meaning توحيد. Connect them to Allah. Why? Because this is the foundation of everything. Your ibadah will be nullified if you do not have that ikhlas and that sincerity in worshipping Allah alone. And of course it's very important that the Muslim is vigilant and they are uh, very careful when it comes to tawheed and what damages that tawheed and what nullifies that tawheed. So it's upon the student of knowledge, it's incumbent that they learn the, the types of shirk, whether they are the statements that are uh, uttered with the tongue or actions that are uh, completed with the limbs. So this is the first one. Performing your ibadat with sincerity. Singling out Allah in worship. Directing all types of worship towards Him. Alone. And Allah Azza wa does not accept any deed that is not performed for Him alone. Where He is not singled out in that worship. تَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ لَا تُشْرِكُ بِهِ شَيْئًا then the second one is وَتُقِيمَ الصَّلَاةِ The second one is that you establish the prayer, perform the salah. This is the second pillar. And of course the salah has many virtues. And it comes after Tawheed. And the Sahaba, they did not see leave, leaving any act of worship other than salah as a, a kufr. Meaning that if a person leaves salah, then the scholars have uh, uh, some of the scholars that have said that this person will leave the fold of Islam and of course this is the strongest opinion so this is Salah the most important deed that a person can perform in order to get closer to Allah Azawajal. and leaving it neglecting it has serious consequences in this world and in the hereafter and Allah Azawajal mentions the uquba and the punishment for the person who leaves Salah deliberately and does not pray to Allah. So the second one is the foundation, the, the, the act of worship, Salah. And Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Quran that this is the way of the prophets and that this is the way of the, the Salihin, the pious, and those who came after them. And if anyone leaves Salah after these prophets, have performed and commanded their followers to perform salah, then this person Allah Azzawajal attaches uh, salah to uh, the, the lack of praying, uh, lack of salah or leaving salah to following the desires and the whims, the evil desires that a person can do. Why is that? Because Allah Azzawajal says in another ayah, إن الصلاة تنهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر. صلاة prevents a person from committing sins. عن الفحشاء والمنكر. Next one, the third one, the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions is وتؤتي الزكاة to give charity, to pay charity, and to give it to those that it should be given to. So if you look closely here and you pay attention, reflect over these. The Prophet ﷺ starts with Tawheed and then he mentions that Salah is the second one. So he's going to mention the pillars of Islam one by one. But of course, this religion is not restricted to the five pillars. There are more deeds that a person can do in order to get closer to Allah. And it is more comprehensive than these five pillars. Like in these five pillars are the foundation of this religion. Then the Prophet ﷺ says, وَتُؤْتِي zakah To give charity we've already learned what charity is just to give a portion certain amount of your wealth when it's reached the threshold or that amount and you've had it for one year and it's given to the eight groups of people that Allah mentions in the Quran so there is sadaqa and there is zakah in this ayah Allah mentions zakah or sadaqa, meaning the zakah that should be given. وَتَصُومَ Ramadan And to fast in the month of Ramadan. This is again the fourth pillar of Islam. And the Prophet ﷺ is 
counting these before he mentions the other deeds. وَتَحُجَّ الْبَيْتِ And to make hajj to the house of Allah for whoever is able to do that. If you have the ability, you have the provision, you have the financial means, then you should go and do hajj. Uh, then the Prophet ﷺ mentions something very, very important. And he says, أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ ثُمَّ قَالْ أَلَا أَدُلُّكَ عَلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْخَيْرِ Shall I not tell you about the gates of goodness or the paths of goodness? Things that uh, these paths will lead you to, to go to Jannah or to attain the success that's mentioned. The Prophet ﷺ mentions a number of things here. as Jannah, number one, as Jannah, that Sawm is a shield. Fasting is a shield, it's a barrier. It is uh, a barrier that a person can place between them and the hellfire. as Jannah, it is a shield from the hellfire. And the Prophet ﷺ mentions in another hadith, whoever fasts for Allah, uh, for the sake of Allah, Allah Azza wa Jal, ba'adahu Allahu wajhahu ala nari sab'ina kharifan. Man saama yawman lillah, ba'adahu Allahu wajhahu ala nari sab'ina kharifan. Whoever fasts for Allah one day, even one day, okay, this is now. The Prophet ﷺ is talking about the voluntary fasts. Why? Because he mentioned the obligatory uh, sawm at the beginning of the hadith. This can also be the, uh, the both of them. This can mean both of them. So he says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever fasts for the sake of Allah in one day, Allah Azza wa Jalla removes their face from the hellfire by the distance of 70 years. So uh, Siyam has a very tremendous reward that only Allah knows. Uh, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in a hadith, or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions in a hadith that uh, the, the reward for fasting is kept hidden by Allah. It's concealed. كل عمل لابن آدم إلا Siyam فإنه لي وأنا أجزي به Every single deed, every single good act that the human being does is for him meaning he will have the reward for it okay and that reward is mentioned either in the quran or in the sunnah except for fasting and i will reward that person with something they can never imagine meaning that is a huge reward so it is upon the muslim to fast as much as they can especially the uh, the fast, the voluntary or the subjectivity uh, fasting, meaning the Mondays and Thursdays, for example, especially these days, it's very easy to fast uh, the 14th and the 13th or the 15th of every month. Uh, the fasting three months from every uh, three days from every month. So fasting has a very very huge reward that Allah has mentioned in the in the in the Quran. The, fa the first reward that a person will get is taqwa. They will attain taqwa. And of course, every single Muslim wants to attain taqwa. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ So the Prophet ﷺ mentions here in this hadith that As-sawmu jannah Sawm is a, it's a shield or it is a barrier that uh, stops that person. A person that prevents that person from falling into the fire. It is a veil that protects you from the fire. Next one is وَالصَّدَقَةُ تُطْفِئُ الْخَطِيئَةَ كَمَا يُطْفِئُ الْمَاءُ النَّارِ Again, this is the sadaqah that is given voluntarily. Meaning, it's not the zakah that's wajib to be given out. It could also be that the sadaqah puts out sins. It extinguishes sins as water it extinguishes fire. So the sadaqah should be given as the Prophet ﷺ encourages. Every time you commit a sin, 
and you will commit a sin because you're a human being, give sadaqah for Allah Azza wa Jal. It is a way of uh, wiping away the sins you have committed. And this is very important because the Prophet وسلم, attached so much importance to sadaqah. Uh, to the extent that he said that the human being or the Muslim or the person, the individual will come on the day of judgment and they will be under the shade of their sadaqah on the day that the sun will be so close to your head and everyone will be sweating according to their level of sins. So the Prophet وسلم, encouraged us to give sadaqah in many, many narrations. Next one is والصدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ الماء النار وصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل صلاة الرجل the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم mentions a man's prayer or a woman's prayer صلاه في جوف الليل in the middle of the night likewise it extinguishes صيام so the wow wow صلة هنا the wow that comes before صلاة it is connected to what comes before it صدقة تطفئ الخطيئة كما يطفئ النار وكذلك الصلاة and so does Salah extinguish the, um, the sins. And this is mentioned in the Quran in many places. Allah Azza wa encourages us to stand up for the night prayer especially. It is the uh, night prayer in the middle of the night when a person stands for, a, for Salah to pray to Allah Azza wa The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions that وعلم أن uh, Jibreel came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he said to Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, I'lam ish ma shi'ta fa inna kamayyit. Live however long you want because you will die. This is in a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, an authentic hadith. Ish ma shi'ta fa inna kamayyit. Wahabib man shi'ta fa inna katufariqo. And love whoever you want to love because you will depart from them, you will live them. Wa'alam anna sharaf al mu'mini qiyamuhu. And know that the honor of the believer is them standing up in the middle of the night and being self-sufficient, not asking others for anything. So this is a very important ibadah and salatul layl, that the prayer that you stand up for the middle of the, in the middle of the night is the most important prayer after the fara'id, after the obligatory prayers. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in the Quran, إِنَّنَا شِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشِدُّ وَطْأً وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Mentioning how important it is, Allah Azza wa Jal says in Surah Al-Muzzammil إِنَّنَا شِئَةَ اللَّيْلِ هِيَ أَشِدُّ وَطْأً وَأَقْوَ مُقِيلًا Indeed, the hours of the night, they are more effective for the person that's praying. And they are more suitable for words, meaning the Qur'an that is recited. It's more effective when you're praying at night, when everyone else, everyone else is asleep and you're reciting the Qur'an, you'll reflect over it more. You will contemplate over the meanings of what you, what you are reciting. Plus, it is the time uh, or that time where Allah Azza wa Jal descends in a, maj in a manner that befits His Majesty. يَنزِلُ رَبُّنَا تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى كُلَّ لَيْلَةٍ إِلَى السَّمَاءِ الدُّنْيَا حِينَ يَبْقَى ثُلُثُ اللَّيْلِ الْأَخِيرِ فَيَقُولُ هل من داع فأستجيب له هل من مستغفر فأغفر له هل من سائل فأعطيه الله عز وجل comes down in the last part of the night in a manner which befits his majesty only Allah knows how but he comes down this is mentioned in the hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and we have to uh, affirm that for him he comes down and he says, is there anyone who wants to supplicate, who wants to ask and I shall give them what they are asking for? Is there anyone who will seek forgiveness and I will forgive them? And Allah Azza wa Jal mentions this hadith, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi mentions this hadith to encourage us to stand up for the night prayer, even if it's just two rak'ah. So this is a very important ibadah that the believer should not miss out on, especially in the winter. The uh, Winter months where the night is very long and you can go back to sleep, very easy to get uh, to wake up. Lakin, it's difficult at the same time. It's only easy for those people whom Allah makes easy for. Lakin, 
it is difficult. Why? Because you're getting up from a warm bed, very comfortable, and to get up at that, uh, at that time of the night, it's not easy. This is why the Prophet ﷺ attached so much reward or so much importance to it. And he says that it will wipe away the sins. It will uh, extinguish the sins. Like what extinguishes sins? The next one is, uh, and then the Prophet ﷺ recited an ayah from the Quran. تَتَجَافَ جُنُوبُهُمْ عَنِ الْمَضَاجِعِ يَدْعُونَ رَبَّهُمْ خَوْفًا وَطَمَعًا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون فلا تعلم نفس ما أخفي لهم من قرة أعين جزاء بما كانوا يعملون. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم recited this ayah from Surah Sajda and he's, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in this ayah that تتجافى جنوبهم they rise from their beds and supplicate to their Lord in fear and hope تتجافى جنوبهم so they forsake their beds meaning they get up for prayer they get up for salah at this time of the uh, of the night and uh, Allah the Prophet ﷺ kept reciting until he reached the next ayah the end of the next ayah so Allah Azza wa Jal after mentioning that they stand up for prayer in the middle of the night in ho uh, hoping for the reward with Allah and fearing his punishment uh, Allah says فَلَا تَعْلَمُ نَفْسٌ مَا أُخْفِيَ لَهُمْ مِنْ قُرَّةِ أَعْيُنٍ No soul knows uh, that no soul knows what it has put forth or what has been hidden for it. No soul knows what has been hidden for them of comfort for the eyes, meaning of the reward that is with Allah Azza wa Jal. So this is an ayah which encourages and motivates us to get up for salah and to pray to Allah. And then after that, the Prophet said, "Ala ukhbiruka bi ra'sil amri." So everything that he's mentioning, it shows the importance of that. Okay, and he, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, says here, "Ala ukhbiruka bi ra'sil amri wa amudihi wa dirwati sanami." Shall I not tell you? Shall I not inform you of the ra'sul uh, amri uh, of the Ahead of the matter, meaning the most important deed, وَعَمُودِهِ and its main pillar, وَذِرْوَةِ سَنَامِهِ and its peak, meaning at the pinnac the pinnacle of all of these things we've mentioned: salah, siyam, fasting, siyam uh, al-layl, fasting voluntarily. All of these things. What is even more important is رَأْسُ الْأَمْرِ Islam. The head of the matter is Islam, meaning submission to Allah Azza wa Jal through Tawheed. Al Istislamu lillahi bi Tawheed, wal inqiyadu lahu bi Taa'a, being obedient to Him with full obedience. Wal baraat min shirk wa ahlihi, freeing oneself from shirk and its people. This is what Islam means. So Islam, or having that Tawheed, goes back to Tawheed again. Is more important than all of these things. رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة وذروة سلام الجلسة. Okay, رأس الأمر الإسلام وعموده الصلاة. The main pillar of all of these things we've mentioned is Salah. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says the core pillar is Salah. So you see how important Salah is. It is mentioned three times in this hadith. First of all, at the beginning of the hadith, وتقيم الصلاة. Secondly, وصلاة الرجل في جوف الليل. Thirdly, it's mentioned here. Uh, salah. And then the Prophet says that Dirwati Sanami. Dirwatu Sanami, the pinnacle of all of this or the peak is jihad. Okay? And that is legislated in the religion. And that is to um, uh, want that the word of Allah is raised above all of the other religions and then the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says ala ukhbiruka bi milaki dhalika kulli shall i not inform you shall i not inform you uh, of something by which you can attain all of that if you do this thing then you will attain all of the 
points that I mentioned or all of the types of ibadat that I mentioned earlier in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam okay and if you get this wrong and you don't uh, establish this or you don't fulfill this then all of the previous ibadat can be nullified by this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says how you can achieve shall I not tell you of how you can attain or achieve all of the all of this I said uh, Mu'ad radiallahu an said قُلْتُ بَلَى يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ I said yes O Messenger of Allah فَأَخَذَ بِلِسَانِهِ وَقَالَ so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed to his tongue and he said he said كُفَّ عَلَيْكَ هَذَا restrain this control it Control your tongue. The Prophet ﷺ is now telling Mu'adh that if you want to achieve all of these things, Salah, Siyam, Sadaqah, Jihad, Fi Sabilillah, then you have to control. Now what's the relationship between this and the ibadat that came before it? It means that uh, it can nullify everything that came before it. Why? Because this tongue Allah Azza wa Jal gave us this tongue and it's a ni'mah from Allah Lakin, it is easy for people to say things that can damage or that can nullify their deeds Okay, so controlling the tongue is hard, it's very difficult uh, A person may, uh, may pray salah, a person will pray salah, they will fast, they will uh, go hajj Lakin it might be difficult for them to control their tongues and this is why the Prophet ﷺ is pointing to this and he's saying uh, that if you restrain this then you can achieve all of the stuff that comes before it uh, the Salaf would say that we did not see piety or righteousness as a uh, as praying Salah or fasting rather piety was known at the time of the Salaf as uh, something that can be attained by controlling your tongue why because everything every shar comes from this tongue every evil stems from you saying uh, something wrong or you uttering a word which may cause the anger of Allah you either speak about another person or uh, you say something about the religion of Allah which is incorrect and that can nullify everything that you do this is why the Prophet says that uh, a person may, an individual might speak a word. They may, they may say a word. That a person might say a word that they did not pay attention to, and that can lead them to be thrown into the hellfire. Uh, by the distance of 70 years So this is a very serious matter the Prophet ﷺ mentioned and he says You have to restrain your tongue. You have to control your tongue Then the Mu'ad said to him Ya Nabi Allah wa inna lemu'akhaduna bima natakallamu bihi I said to the Prophet ﷺ will, we be, will we be held responsible for for this or against this? We will be held responsible for uh, speaking for not controlling our tongue. Then the Prophet says, فَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ يَا مُعَاذ فَكِلَتْكَ أُمُّكَ May your mother be bereaved of you. May your mother may lose you. Meaning that this is not, uh, the Prophet is not cursing him, he's not making dua against him. Like it was a word that was used at the time and it's still used. And uh, the uh, the intention behind this or the meaning behind this is not to cast that one but it's rather to disapprove of someone's point or disapprove of what this person is saying May your mother be bereaved of you O Mu'adh Is there anything that throws people into the hellfire uh, On their faces Onto their faces is there anything that throws people or that causes people to go into the fire except that which their tongues have earned 
So this is the um, the part of the hadith that informs us and that indicates that everything goes back to your tongue. You either say something good or remain silent. Everything that comes out of your tongue is either a khair or a shar. There is nothing in between. So um, uh, every individual has to control their tongue. Every person has to know what they are saying. Whether it's halal or haram, speak. Speak. Like in before you speak, make sure that what you're speaking is allowed and it's permissible. And uh, we'll end here, inshallah. We're only going to cover one hadith today. We can go through the answers for the question, inshallah. For the uh, for the exam, the test, and uh, we'll stop here. هذا وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, shall we um, go through the answers or post them on the channel? Uh, it's more How do you prefer? We don't want uh, because not everyone uh, is here, I think. Yeah. Everyone might not be here. فَرَاجِعْهَا وَدَعْ عَنْكَ الْمُضَيْنَا فَمَا بِالْبُطْئِ تُدْرِكُ مَا طَلَبْتَا وَلَا تَخْتَلْ بِمَالِكَ وَالْهَا عَنْهُ فَلَيْسَ الْمَالُ إِلَّا مَا عَلِمْتَا وَلَيْسَ لِجَاهِرٍ فِي النَّاسِ مُغْنٍ وَلَوْ مُلْكُ الْعِرَاقِ لَهُ تَأَتَّا